Hello everyone, I greet in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Sunitin Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to. And this one says that, who is Allah and is there a Muslim? Okay, I believe that this is going to be a very interesting um, video. And this will give us an opportunity to be able to understand um, who is um, God. But then, when we get down to the video, we are going to learn a lot about um, who is um Allah. So if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get on to the video, I'm a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's thought or opinion or even religion. This is basically for educational purposes and I believe that at the end of this video, we all are going to learn from this. So guys, without any further ado, Let's get down to this video and check this out. Who is Allah? Hello and welcome back to For All Humans. Today we ask the controversial question, who is Allah? Is he solely the Muslim God? Or can that name also be claimed by Christianity and Judaism? Let's find out. Monotheism translates as belief in one God, and this term identifies a form of belief which is commonly contrasted with beliefs in many gods or a mixture of gods, spirits, and other entities. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam are all monotheistic traditions, but these are not the only traditions that revere a single God. Sikhism, Odinani, and forms of Hinduism can also lay claim to monotheistic belief. So why are Judaism, Christianity, and Islam often grouped together and referred to as the monotheistic faiths? Much of this is rooted in shared narratives that are woven throughout the respective holy texts of the Torah, Bible, and Quran, alongside a shared belief in prophethood and divine revelation. In fact, all of these three religions called the Abrahamic faiths believe Abraham to be their first prophet. Judaism, the oldest of the three monotheistic faiths, first arose roughly 3,500 years ago. While the available historical records show an initial diffusion of different beliefs, it coalesced around the core understanding that God, a singular, all-powerful entity, made a covenant with Abraham. And following oppression under the Egyptian pharaoh, this singular God renewed the covenant with Moses, who eventually led the Jews out of slavery and into the Promised Land. The Ten Commandments were revealed to Moses, and the Torah set the precedent for Jews to follow teachings that were reinforced and added to by a tradition of prophets and holy men that stretched through generations. And as for Christianity, as a distinct religious tradition, it branched off Judaism based on the life and teachings of Jesus of Nazareth, a Jewish preacher born and raised in Palestine around 5 AD. It came to rest upon the belief of Jesus as the Son of God and the Savior of all people who put their faith in Him in the Bible, incorporating a New Testament alongside the Jewish Old Testament. Conversion to this new faith was much more straightforward than Judaism, and so Christianity became a universalist faith. While the center of power soon after shifted further west to Rome and then Constantinople, there was and still is a strong Christian tradition in the Arab world, with some of the oldest churches located there and sermons still carried out in Aramaic, the historical language of Christ. Comparatively, Islam is the youngest of the three faiths, dating back to about 610 AD. The Prophet Muhammad preached revelations from God that were revealed through the angel Jibreel. These revelations were recorded in the Quran and backed by authentic sayings or hadiths of Prophet Muhammad. Islam specifically inherited and reinforced the notion that Abraham was pivotal in rediscovering monotheism and rejecting idolatry. It's impossible to find any other three faiths that collectively and connectively form such an intimate narrative as do these three consecutive revelations of monotheism. All three of these faiths share a pattern. The trio all feature a divinely inspired leader preaching a belief in one God as preached by the earliest prophets. All three fought against the oppression of the time and emerged victorious through their belief in God. Each subsequent iteration of faith reaffirms the previous message but expands upon it in a corrective manner. And all three leave behind a book for the faithful as a blueprint to live life. With such powerful symmetry, it is no surprise that all three faiths are seen by some as a continuation of the same message and therefore the claim to worship the same God can be understood. While the names of Jewish Old Testament labels God variously as Elohim, Yahweh, and other names, both Christian and Islamic texts usually refer simply to God, and by extension the Arabic for God, Allah, which is most commonly used by Muslims. 
God is referred to by numerous names within the Quran itself, attributes that serve as epithets attempting to describe the rich and complex capabilities of Allah. Muslims in fact possess 99 names to refer to Allah, such as the Creator, the King, the Judge, and the Light. But is Allah just for Muslims? Somewhat surprisingly, the word Allah was actually in use well before the Prophet Muhammad began preaching Islam in the deserts of Arabia. According to Lane's Arabic-English Lexicon Dictionary, the word Allah is from Classical Arabic and means the being who exists necessarily by himself, comprising all the attributes of perfection, a proper name denoting the true God. It's found in pre-Islamic poetry and in ancient inscriptions in Arabia, denoting the Supreme God. The Prophet Muhammad's own father, who died before the Prophet was born, was called Abdullah, a popular name even in today's Islamic world, meaning one who is a servant of Allah. And even the idol worship of the pre-Islamic Arabs was a conduit to reach Allah because they felt unworthy to form a direct relationship with Him. As stated in the Holy Quran, the idol worshippers say, We worship them, the idols, only so that they may bring us nearer to Allah. Therefore, it would be incorrect to claim that the Muslims themselves invented the term or even the concept of Allah. Language plays a pivotal role in trying to pick apart why there is so much confusion inherent in the term Allah, but it's just semantics. It is worth noting that the name Allah is also used by Arabic-speaking Christians and Jews to describe God. You can verify this by simply picking up an Arabic copy of the Bible. Furthermore, the Aramaic word for God, El, is similar to the Hebrew word for God, Elah, which is singular for Elohim all similar to Allah. The similarity between all three of these languages points again to the fact that all three originated in similar parts of the world as Aramaic, Hebrew, and Arabic, all Semitic languages with common origins. Taking this a step further, the universal teachings of Islam have spread far and wide, with many countries and therefore languages adopting the faith. What remains though is that Islam has been preserved in Arabic regardless of who practices it. Therefore many Muslims use the term Allah when referring to God, even if they are non-native Arabic speakers. This is illustrated in the verse, Never did we send a messenger except to teach in the language of his own people in order to make things clear to them. There is even a widespread sharing of the word Allah between Muslims and non-Muslims around the world. In Malta, locals refer to God as Allah because their language has been deeply influenced by Arabic. Even in different languages, the concept of God persists as universal. For example, the French use of the word Dieu to refer to God and the Spanish Dios which is understood as the same concept of God, but just in a different language. Therefore, the same fluidity and understanding must be applied to the use of the term Allah. Islam itself acknowledges that the God of the Jews and the Christians is the same as the God of the Muslims, as it states, say, we believe in that which has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to you. Our God and your God are one. We surrender to him. And further compounded in the verse, Allah, there is no God but him, the living, the sustainer. He has revealed the book to you in truth, confirming what was before it, and who revealed the Torah and the Gospel. These verses clearly disown the common misconception that Muslims worship a different God. Muslims worship the God of Noah, Abraham, Moses, Solomon, and Jesus. It's only the concepts surrounding the understanding of God as a supreme being that differ. Both Muslims and Jews reject the belief of the Trinity and the Divine Incarnation, and Muslims believe Islam came to rectify these divergent paths. But it seems many didn't get the memo since in 2013, a court in Malaysia ruled that non-Muslims were no longer allowed to use the term Allah to refer to God, even within the parameters of their own faith. The decision caused unrest in Malaysia where Christians, Sikhs, and others used the term to refer to their God. Many rightly argued that the term Allah had been in use before the establishment of Malaysia and therefore the country should not infringe upon the use of the term by anyone. More recently, in 2015, Wheaton College, an evangelical institution at the forefront of Christian preaching, placed one of its professors, Dr. Larisha Hawkins, on forced leave due to behavior Wheaton described as inconsistent with their doctrinal convictions. After Dr. Harkins wore the hijab to stand in religious solidarity with Muslims because they, like her, a Christian, are people of the book. And as Pope Francis stated, we worship the same God. Wheaton was criticized for its stance and its subsequent statements of giving Dr. Harkins more time to explore the theological implications of her recent public statements only served to add fuel to the fire. Wheaton's actions placed the already strained Christian-Muslim relations under further stress. Both these examples illustrate that the concept of God is still held in ownership by those who deem themselves as the vanguards of their respective faiths. However, the words Allah, God, Elohim, etc are all popular vernacular and are interchangeable. The ultimate question for a believing Muslim will revolve around the understanding of the concept of God without any partners or dilutions, misunderstandings or misconceptions.
not the semantically preferred term to refer to him. As Allah states in the opening scriptures of the Quran, all praise is due to God alone, sustainer of all the worlds. As with the example of Wheaton, a more general and persistent misunderstanding of Islam has served to increase the idea that Muslims subscribe to a completely separate faith at odds with our Jewish and Christian cousins. Anti-Islamic literature, pervasively biased media campaigns and fear of the other has portrayed Islam as foreign and incompatible with Western society. Lifting this veil will go to great lengths in demonstrating to people that Islam perceives itself as merely an extension of Judaism and Christianity. Monotheism, therefore, is the basis of a linked harmony between Muslims, Jews, and Christians. For Muslims, it is an incumbent part of belief to highlight the similarities between the faiths to increase harmony and enjoin togetherness. As Allah states in the Quran, Say, O people of the book, come to a common word between us and you, that we will worship none but Allah and not associate anything with Him. Wow, that's a very interesting um, video, learning about um, this very video, who is Allah. And when they say that who is Allah, it will not depend on every individual, okay? Because if you ask me, in a sense, who is Allah, I begin to tell you, in a sense, this is God, the person that created, in a sense, heaven and earth, gave me bread, protect me, provide for me, do this for me, manifest himself, you understand, on this very earth, you understand, in flesh, call Jesus, all those things, die for my sin, atone, you understand, for sins of um, humanity and all that and all that. If you ask another person who is also a Christian, we give you his own different version of who God is. Talk less of you understand asking people who are of different, uh, not of same religion. You hear diverse you understand reasons because we are humans. We have needs, so everyone have you understand different um, ways of explaining you understand who is Allah to him. So it's just like the same question as asking and says that who is God? Same thing in does in English, in Arabic, who is Allah? The Allah we know in a sense in God, in a sense in Arabic, right? So everyone has his own reasons. But then this video went on to talk about in a sense the similarities, in a sense, in Judaism, Christianity, and then also Muslim. But for me, I could um, insist and says that to me. In my own understanding, both the Jew, Christians, Muslim, all worship one God and all worship the same God, but they just have a different understanding about God. That's just it. And that's the reason why I see I'm saying that. If you ask even a Christian and say, who is Allah? You tell you Allah is this, Allah is this, Allah is that. Allah is that. Same thing is also applicable to the Muslim. If you ask, they tell you Allah is this, Allah is this. Same thing with the, uh, with the Judaism. Same thing they are going to tell you. They will tell you Allah is this. But then at the end of the day, in conclusion, we just worship one God. And all, in a sense, I can say is that let's not just try to overdo things. As for insult, it's normal for me to receive it in a sense in this video. I know a lot of you insult me, both the Christian, both the Muslim, and I don't even delete them. <laughs> I don't even delete them. They are all there. Sometimes, you know, some people are like, oh, why don't you hide them? I'm not hiding anything. If you have a mind to come and sit in the public and leave it at the public sphere, if you insult, what difference does it make? Does it remove anything in my body? No, it's not removing anything in a sense in my body. But one thing I could just tell you is that. Whether you are a Christian, you are a Muslim, you are a Jew, we all worship the same God, one God. Just that, we have different understanding about who God is. And that is what that causes all these differences. People do some certain things and then thinking that, I don't just know what they think, but then I could tell you that we are all worship the same God. And I also want to hear your thought and opinion because a lot of you, you all of us watch this video together. And all of us in a sense will have different opinions in a sense about it. So let me see yours at the comment um, session. And may God bless you as you do so. Bye bye.